Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextra Gunfighter. A um, little bit here on my, what I call my concealed carry carbine package. Now you may have just seen, I uh, have an Eberly stock mini-me backpack with one of their uh, rifle scabbards, which I've actually shortened. I've got another video on another channel on how I shortened the scabbard a bit. And the reason is, is I shortened it is because I am carrying in this a Caltech SU-16, which is folded up, quite compact. This rifle weighs, uh, with this whole setup here, weighs five pounds and three ounces. Amazingly lightweight, compact, 5.56 five, carbine. Now the reason I'm back today, I'm gonna do kind of a continuation of the How To Zero at 25 Yard series. And the reason I'm uh, re-zeroing this rifle, before I had the optic on it, and I'll show you the optic we had here before. <clears throat> I previously had this Weaver uh, Grand Slam scope on here, and uh, which is a nice scope. I really like it. Uh, just doesn't quite fit the, uh, as nut and fancy would say, the philosophy of use for this carbine. And the reason I say that is that this scope, uh, one, it sets a little bit high. And so that uh, kind of gets in the way of it fitting in my backpack scabbard well. It kind of uh, reduces its compactness. Other thing is weight. This thing is a considerable, quite a bit heavy. Uh, whereas this Burris Fast Fire 2, which I'm going to mount here, a red dot, is super lightweight. Uh, I think you measure that in the grams. I have a, uh, a Picatinny mount on here to mount on the, on the pick rail of this SU-16C. Now you may also notice uh, I've added a foam uh, cheek weld pad here to give me a little more elevation. And I did that originally because this optic was, uh, you know, like I said, was a little bit, a little bit high. And so the cheek pad to get me the elevation to get a proper cheek weld and still get a good view through the scope. Now the thing is, is with this cheek pad, I'm still getting a really good view through the red dot. So I think that's gonna help there as well. Now, one thing I talked about in the previous video is that this, uh, the Caltech SU-16 has this, this foregrip actually splits apart and comes into a bipod. Well, I'm not a fan of bipods, and uh, the reason being that it basically introduced the ver variations in terrain into your shooting platform. So if you're shooting from sand, rock, gravel, concrete, you know, pavement, grass, whatever, the bipod is taking that surface and introducing that variable into your uh, your shooting uh, steady hold factors. And so I like to isolate with my body and my and my rifle sling, isolate the rifle as much as possible from the terrain. Now this Everly Stock Mini Me backpack, it's one of my favorite packs, so I'll use it for a day hike and I've got many videos on my other channel, Raggedy Edge, where uh, I've used this pack out, uh, out in the Badlands of Wyoming and uh, it's got a nice uh, a, a, a bladder in it for hyd a hydration pack and it's quite small but carries just what you need basically for a day and puts that rifle to where it's within reach but yet is uh, leaves both hands free so uh, i really like that comfortable pack again lightweight and i use it a lot now this uh su-16 some things i've done on this of course i've had this many years uh, it has the uh, where i did this original this paint job using hunter specialties paint kit and that I thought turned out really well. I did of course have the receiver painted at one time, but uh, if you check one of my other videos, I did get a cracked receiver on it. And um, Keltuck uh, graciously took care of that and quickly had a quick turnaround on it. And so now I've got kind of a two-tone thing. I've decided to stick with that, kind of the black here for the receiver and the camos for the rest of it. Now, oh, one of the other reasons I'm switching from this, this optic is that uh, when field stripping the Caltech SU-16, this uh, spring tube here, this recoil spring, to get the bolt carrier group out, it uh, kind of unhooks here and then it has to move back a little bit and then it tilts up. 
And in order for it to tilt up with this optic in the way, to field strip this, you would have to remove the optic, field strip, and then replace the optic, which means, you know, maybe your zero is good when you put it back on, maybe not. And the only way to do it is to fire some shots and verify it. So for uh, that's another advantage of using the Burris Fast Fire on the Caltech SU-16 is that I will be able to easily field strip this rifle without affecting the zero of the Fast Fire. Another night, a, neat, a little feature I've done on this rifle is I've added a, a uh, it's a ThinkPad, ThinkPad track point eraser head. If you're familiar with on a keyboard of a ThinkPad computer, notebook computer, the little eraser head that you use to, to, instead of a mouse, which I recommend. In fact, I've got a video on that on my other channel, but that just happens to fit right in here, right snugly and nice. And it gives me just a little more uh, feel and a little more elevation so I can click that safety off using the back of my finger. Now I wish this was, you know, I don't care for crossboat safeties because in this case that's fire um, and on the other side it pushing it in is uh, putting it on safe. And I like things to be perfectly mirrored for ambidextrous stuff but still super lightweight rifle. Uh, of course, doesn't have an ambidextrous magazine release, so you know, I'm, I wish it did, but it doesn't. But uh, you can't beat five pounds, three ounces, and it folds up into your nice little concealed carry carbine package. So now I'm going to get my sling set up, I'll get the target set up, and we'll set up to do some uh, zeroing. So we'll be right back. All right, we've got a target set up, and I've got my sling, uh, I think I got it adjusted right going to be using the uh, Project Appleseed uh, 25, milli 25 meter drill target. This is what I'll use for sighting in. I'll be shooting at the center square and uh, we're at uh, 25 yards, 25 meters, approximately about the same. And uh, at this distance, each one of these little quarter inch squares is one minute of angle. So this is a four minute of angle square at 25 meters. And uh, of course at 100 yards, that would be approximately four, uh, one minute of angle. But we're shooting at 25 meters or 25 yards. So this is four minute of angle. Each quarter inch square is one minute of angle. And uh, the clicks on the Burris Fast Fire are one minute of angle per click. I have the uh, red dot set at the lowest setting. So it's kind of the smallest I can make it. Uh, so that it, uh, at its brightest setting, it pretty much just obliterates the uh, four minute of angle target. It must be about a, a three minute of angle dot at its brightest setting. I'm guessing that with this lowest setting, maybe it's down to maybe a two minute of angle dot. All right, just like before in the previous videos in our uh, uh, How to Zero at 25 Yards series, um, we're going to be shooting at a four minute of angle black square on the Project Appleseed targets, the 25 meter targets. So we're going to be shooting for this square here and we're going to put our red dot right in the center of that square. And we're going to zero that at 25 yards and then that should put us on at about 300 yards. Now of course the red dot is actually it's about a three minute of angle red dot so what it's going to look like is about like that. It's going to pretty much almost obliterate the black square, but it's enough to rush a bit to see it all right. Now remember the tra trajectory of the 5.56 round. So we're going to be, we have our, uh, say our, our rifle barrel and then our optic, in this case a red dot, and the, our sighting system goes in a straight line because light does not bend, at least not any in regards to us. Now, actually the barrel is angled up just a little bit, tiny bit. And this is the whole rifle system here. And so here's the barrel angling up a bit. So the round fires out of the barrel, comes up and meets the line of sight at 25. Goes up. Up, 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 and then down and drops and then crosses the line of sight again at approximately 300 yards, somewhere between 275 and 300 yards. 
and then it drops off off from there and then typically you're looking at about uh, say about five inches high here at, at say a hundred 100 yards, 150 yards. And then what we need to do is once I've zeroed at 25, I need to get to a full distance range and then check, okay, let's verify where we're hitting at, at the distance zero. Is it 275 to 300, somewhere around there? And then check our points in between. Where are we hitting at 50 yards? You know, how, how much higher is it at 50 yards? Probably say, you know, an inch and a half is my, just a guess. And then check 75 yards and 100 yards. And then 150, 200, 250, all the way on out. And see where we're hitting at each point. So, what we, so basically what we're gonna know is our, you know, our estimated ballistics versus real world ballistics of what we're getting out of our rifle. So, Anyway, that's uh, that's the target we'll be using and so now we're prepared to go So now we're ready to go live Get uh, got my eyes on get my ears on A little bit chilly today, but at least there's no bugs I'm gonna zero right-handed, and then I think I'll come back and we'll check, make sure everything looks good left-handed. <sighs> Doing our natural point of aim drill. Close my eyes, do a couple inhale, exhales. <sighs> my sling's taking all the support off the target quite a bit shift over pivoting around my support elbow a little minor adjustment Safe. Let's go check our target. So, uh, really like the Keltec SU-16 compact rifle. Let's see if we're even on paper. If I have to come in, uh, say at 12 yards, and do that again, not even on paper. So, what I'm going to do is shift up to about. I'm going to shift up to 12 yards, fire three rounds again, and uh, 12 and a half yards, you can figure that uh, one, every one-eighth of an inch is one minute of angle. So it's going to take a bunch of clicks probably to get this thing on. Well now, that was something I've never had to do before. I uh, fired uh, three rounds at 12 yards and still was not on paper. So I moved into about six yards and my shot ended up let's see right right here, aiming for center of target. So we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, say about 10. 10 quarters of an inch to the right and so at, the, at six yards it's about a sixteenth of an inch per minute of angle so 
each one of these blocks is uh, whereas at 25 meters is one minute of angle at six yards is going to be uh, a quarter minute of angle so I've got to do one so so it's four minutes per block so so I've got to go to the left 40 minutes of angle since it's 10 blocks 40 minutes of angle to the left and say uh, 16 up 40 left and 16 up you remember that when we get back to the rifle and we'll make adjustments all right we're back at 25 yards i've done uh, 40 minutes of angle left on the burris fast fire and 16 minutes of angle up and we're presumably should be at least on paper here and i didn't do exactly a precise measurement at that how far i was from the target i think i was about six yards so well, uh, I think we're close enough, though. Surely. Got these awesome Bunker King elbow pads on. What a great find. Let the sling take support. Close my eyes, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Open, down a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, here we go, firing from uh, 25 yards. Here's the results on paper. Let's see, here, uh, two kind of separate groups there. I'm gonna pull it over a little bit more, I think to the, maybe one click over to the right and one click up and then fire again. We'll go for one of these targets here and see if we can do a little better. Um, you might think that that was that's awesome that you know I'm right there on paper after shooting at the shorter range but it actually didn't work out quite as clean as I would have liked kind of messed up on my calculation originally remember I said I think it was 16 minute of angle to the right or something well it was actually there was only two squares so it should have been just eight so I ended up chasing chasing uh, my shots around a little bit and uh, so you know watch your calculations carefully uh, don't and I think you know being on the video I'm like trying to be cool or something and and didn't pay attention to my calculations so we'll uh, try again fire for effect and see how it does Well, I think this could have been more of a how not to zero at 25 yards uh, exercise. Um, but we ended up doing sort of okay here. What we've got, uh, I fired a couple of uh, groups here. We, uh, let's see, right here we've got this group. It's a little bit high. And so I did uh, two clicks down and we brought her in uh right here so that's the last group i did so almost all in the black i'm going to call that good for the red dot with the su-16 uh, and probably just not working the trigger quite as well as it could be but uh getting at least a four minute of angle group it looks like or close to it and uh for a red dot that's i guess okay and for an su-16 yeah it's okay too uh, it's for more of a backpack rifle but uh, uh that's it anyway that's it uh, lots of uh 
mistakes and errors and I really don't want to spend that much time on this one so I'm gonna call that good put her clean her up and pack her away and and go on to something else this is Mark Laughlin with the ambidextra gunfighter hope you enjoyed watching me make all these mistakes zeroing my rifle and uh, maybe you'll learn something from it thanks for watching please like share and subscribe